Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and welcome to this preview of Professor Arnold Eretz's Mucus Listi Healing System, annotated, revised, and edited by yours truly, Professor Spira. And uh, we will be releasing this very soon, so I wanted to give you a sneak peek of what is going on in this book and what it's all about. So basically, I got the inspiration to put this together uh, fairly soon after I read the book originally, uh, about 11 years ago. I saw how genius the book was, just how brilliant it was, uh, Eric's explanations, his thinking process, uh, the diet itself as a system and not just merely what you're supposed to eat but how you're supposed to eat it it was just so brilliant but I noticed 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 <laughs> I noticed that there were certain things in there that needed that could be changed to help a 21st century reader better understand what was going on and things that could be defined and all that kind of stuff and I had always wanted to either kind of edit the book or create something like an annotated book. And they, you see this is something they do with Bibles, and I've seen dictionaries, uh, old famous literature. They'll create what's called an annotated or revised version of it, and in the margins, they'll make notes on what was being said. And then another way to look at editing is you have, with a Bible, you have different uh, translations, so different interpretations of the same original text. And when I think fr from an editor's perspective, as long as you don't change the meaning uh, of the intended meaning, you can you know, make minor little changes here and there and for to add readability to make it a little easier to read so i wanted to do that a couple other things in general that i updated uh, updated some of the things that today are against uh, a political correctness that are politically incorrect uh, really having to do with gender as an oftentimes thing things like mankind change the humankind and I, if they would said men, I usually would include men and w women. So that kind of thing was something, the, the types of edits that I made to make things a little bit easier to understand. All right, so another great feature of this electronic version is its navigation. With just a click of a button, you can go to a section. This is a biographical sketch of Arnold Eret, written by myself. And then at the end of each section, there's a back to the top, and you can go back to the contents. So you can fly around the book uh, fairly easily. And uh, if you are familiar with ebooks or PDF uh, electronic books, then you will, I uh, think, uh, definitely enjoy this. And if you're not, then this would be a great first electronic book uh, to do because, yeah, it's, it's going to be a while before it is uh, made available in hardcover. I'm sure that'll eventually happen one day. It, it really depends on the demand. Uh, you know, I try, one thing I've done over the years is I try to respond to the demands as I see them when I look out into the uh, holistic diet community. If you know, I try to cover things that nobody else is talking about. And I don't flood you guys with a million videos and all that kind of stuff. Whenever I say something, whenever I post something, I really mean it. You know, it's something I really hope that people would be able to benefit from and take a look at. Anyway, Fred Hirsch, uh, we got the forward by Fred Hirsch. The introduction by, my, uh, by me to this version, I talk a little bit about how to go about using the book some of those things I'll actually go over here in this little preview so let's get to the first lesson and I'll show you what is 
the the additions I made. This is not just merely taking Arnold Errett's work and you know republishing it. I've contributed a great deal of material to the original source material. So this is the beginning of the book. I'm sure many of you are aware of this. Every disease, no matter what name it is known by medical science, is constipation. It is a clogging up of the entire pipe system of the human body. Now we have a small little uh, superscript one here. So I'm going to click on it and we go down here. And these are my notes that are at the end of every lesson. And some lessons have many notes, other, others not so much. This one I say in the first note, many people assume that Eret is referring only to bowel constipation. However, his use of the word is much broader in scope, referring to constitutional encumbrances on the cellular level that have been obstructing one's organism since birth. Although Eret does assert that the foundation of cellular constipation is bowel constipation, uh, which is the definite result of eating mucus forming foods, Eret's concept of the term extends beyond the bowels. Okay, so, and some of these things that I addressed here di come directly from questions that I've gotten from uh, some of you over the years or, you know, was recent. As I was working on this, I think I got uh, a question about constipation and what Eric was really talk asking, talking about. Somebody had just read the book and they're like, well, constipation, they're, they're thinking only in terms of having a, a constipated bowel and intestines and Eret is using the word constipation uh, as in, in a holistic sense really on a cellular level on, on not just a physical you know big intestinal level but also on a on a uh, cellular level so then that's the big thing here we got great navigation back to the lesson boom you're right back to where you were now, if this is the first time you're reading the book, I'd recommend read everything without the notes first. Just read it straight through. Read the lesson straight through. I would say go lesson by lesson. Read the lesson all the way through first. Then go back and kind of skim and and connect the notes in. And you say, okay, I, you go back. And any special symptom is therefore merely an extraordinary local constipation by more accumulated mucus at this particular place. Hit on that. Whoops. Ah. And we're down here. Um, the word mucus is from the Latin mucus, which means slime, snot, or slime, mold, snot, etc. Mucus refers to a thick, viscous, slippery discharge that is comprised of dead cells, mucin, inorganic salts, water, and exfoliated cells. It also refers to the slimy, sticky, viscous substance left behind by mucus-forming foods in the body after ingestion. So, yeah, so, so that's one of the things I do. I, uh, throughout the notes section, I define words that come up just to just so things are clear you know I, I love clarity i like to define things i like to look at the origin of words uh, they call it etymology you know i'm a huge fan of etymology dictionaries and i use that dictionary not just to uh, not, you know you can use etymology and you can use definitions of words to get a better understanding of the essence of what that word really means and I know that this that's I don't want to get off on that tangent but just that's something I try to bring to this is okay a lot of that I've already done some of that work for you it's in here uh, we you know clear definitions of these terms that sometimes people don't really get the first time they read it they're not honed in on well, what's this, you know, because it's sort of overwhelming. So here it's like, okay, well, just take your time with it. Check it out. What's How do we define mucus list? Refers to foods that are not mucus forming. Such few foods digest without leaving behind thick, viscous, slimy substance called mucus. These foods include all kinds of fat-free and starchless fruits and vegetables. And these days I always have to say fat-free when talking about fruits because Fat, fatty fruits have become 
people it's almost like a religion man people have been insane over like avocados and stuff. all right again I'm, let me try not to get sidetracked i'm sorry um my mucus theory mucus has died healing system stand unshaken it has proven the most successful compensation action so-called cure against every uh, kind of disease and what's my note here uh oh that's what i already read you uh, we talk about the word fruit. Let's see. Fast. The word fast means to abstain from the intake of food and drink for a period of time. It may also refer to various forms of dietary restriction, which include abstaining from solid foods, uh, juice or liquid fasting, uh, mucus forming foods or mucusless diet from animal products, etc. Fasting may also refer more broadly to abstaining from modern conveniences or unnatural additions. Uh, for example, a fast from electricity or the use of electronics for a period of time. So I give you a rather liberal definition of fast where it is not a hardcore definition. It's a spectrum. And that's really one of the things that Eret tends to teach through his writings. It's a spectrum. Uh, and depending on your level fasting is going to be different from you now i know there's some people that got real hardcore fasting must be dry fasting nothing enters the body and that's a fast or people say well water is the only type of liquid that you can have for a fast or a juice uh, fruit juice fast is uh, is is a fast you know uh and uh, and so there's but the thing is, depending on where you are physiologically, your body is going to be in a fa more or less a fasting mode. Uh, some people eat nothing but fruit. I'd, I'd give them fasting status for that because of what they're going through physiologically. If you, uh, if Brother Air eats fruit, that's eating for him because for him, fasting these days is dry fasting. So it's all about physiological uh, kind of just level like where you where you're at. Let me let me get down here. There's a part talking about naturopathy. The term naturopathy was coined in uh, 1895 by John Shield and made famous in the United States by one of Arid's students named Benedict Lust who founded the first school of naturopathy in 1902. Naturopathic medicine favors a holistic and drugless approach to healing and seeks to find the least invasive measures necessary to relieve symptoms and heal human illness. And this question actually came when people were asking about naturopathy. Here's, here it is now here. And uh, because Eret will criticize nature of paths and say okay you're not you're not on this road on this path enough you know you're better than the rest but you got to get more advanced yet he will refer to himself as a nature path and so some people are like well is he a nature path or not and he is you know i've been calling him more recently the forefather of naturopathy you know in his teachings the way he puts them out there it is true naturopathy it's, and so he'll criticize the nature paths that are get, getting off into the supplementation and that type of thing when, and say this mucus free is really where naturopathic healing starts and ends. And so, you know, so these are the, this is just wanted to give you a sense of what's going on in here. These are the kinds of things that I address. Uh, there's different times when Eric will bring up Bible verses or might talk about other books. And so I will either give information about the books or give information about the authors here. He's, he's always talking about Genesis 129. Uh, and in Genesis 129, the voice of God tells Adam and Eve that their diet should consist of fruit. Although there are many different translations of the verse, they all have a similar meaning that suggests the first humans were at best fruitarians or at worst raw and mucusless fruit and vegetable eaters. And that, again, that depends on how you interpret it. 
uh, and I address that. One common uh, 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 variation is from the Vulgate, which is a late 4th century Latin translation of the Bible. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb or plant bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for food. Of course, food also is uh, synonymous for meat. Let's see. Well, this is actually interesting. When, at the time when Eret wrote this, the medical profession has over 4,000 4, names for different ailments. So I tried to update this. In 2007, the World Health Organization distinguished over 12,420 disease categories. This number increases every year. So we've, we have we went from 4,000 to 12,420. Way to go, humans. And, and of course, you know... <laughs> If you're not familiar with this, you'll see that Eric's point with this was that these names really are superfluous. They really are not uh, to be for us to be concerned with too much. You can take it into account, and sometimes it can it can give you a little under help you understand the type of work that you have to do, depending on the severity of of your ailments and, you know, uh, that kind of thing. But as Eric said, all ailments are constipation on some level. There is some kind of constipation and it's, uh, you know, obstruction of, I think I, the other day I said, uh, obstructive acidosis, you know, it's, it's not, it's acids, you know, this, this pus, this mucus, all this stuff turns into acid, uh, in the body that is, uh, devastating on the tissue system, devastating on the organs, devastating on your entire internal condition. And uh, but it's it's all out of obstruction. Your body is not able to eliminate these acids as fast as you're putting them in, and it turns into this uh, systemic obstructive acidosis. Let's see. Okay. Okay, here was one that I... So, okay, we got uh, just another example of the kind of thing that I deal with in here. So we got McFadden, uh, promiscuous fasting. McFadden and many others, for instance, advise fasting as ap applicable to all cases. When I first read the mucus diet, I had no clue who, who McFadden was. When I read the mucus diet, that predated Wikipedia. I'm getting elderly. <laughs> but yeah, so I didn't have there was really no way I'd have had to really get into some serious research if I was going to find out who this who the dude was. But here I just now we, we have it. Before Bernard McFadden was an influential American proponent of physical culture and health. He also founded the long-running magazine publishing company McFadden Publications, one of his most famous magazines. Physical culture was first published in 1899. And then you check these guys out. He was a predecessor to like Jack LaLanne, uh, Charles Atlas, and... Uh, you know, so he, he's somebody, a lot of us don't really know who he is today, but, you know, historically, under, if you're somebody that's into this and into the history of, uh, you know, the art form of healing, uh, and, you know, this, this is, they're, they're not teaching this in the history courses. Uh, and don't talk about Eric, and they should, because he changed the entire landscape uh it's been you know a lot of his history of air it's been suppressed you know and uh they would say for good reason because it changes the whole thing changes the entire thing like so much would have to be eliminated and scrapped in terms of western medical scientific thought and diet thought it would it would just be 
like pack it up, go home, and start over again. And that's really and that's what needs to happen because we've gotten so far away from nature. We've we've just it's it's insane. And uh, so I could keep on talking. Of course, I could probably <laughs> go through this entire book if I don't stop. So I'll read one more. Uh, one of my favorite words, albu- uh, uh, albumin. The word albumin, also spelled uh, albumin, uh, was originally used to refer to the white of an egg, derived from Latin albumin, literally meaning whiteness from albus, white. It is a class of simple water soluble proteins that can be coagulated by heat and are found in egg whites, blood serum, milk, and many other animal and plant tissues. Uh, albuminous refers to something consisting of resembling or containing albumin, albuminous foods decomposed into pus inside the body. So, back to the top here. So that's just a little preview to give you a sense of how the book works, what's in it, what's going on with it. And everybody that I as has read it so far, there's, uh, there's a handful of people that helped me uh, do some reviews on the book and uh, a few other people that, that helped me edit it and things, you know, just edit my own, uh, my own writing. And everybody is really really had great things to say about the book which you know makes me happy <laughs> and uh, you know so I, I want to I want to see it be successful I'm gonna do uh, do everything I can to try to put it out here and promote it uh, promotion is uh, is a point that I'm trying I'm trying to strengthen and develop you know we've always been uh, I know, we, I'm talking about brother Aaron and some of you know we've we've always kind of wanted somebody in the camp that's a, like a great promoter, you know, someone that just is really good at that because uh, we, you know, we all sort of have our fortes in different places, but since uh, that's not emerged yet, you know, I'm gonna do my best and just put it out there. And those of you that are seeing this are really the people that have probably been with us for years you know, checking out our videos and digging the music all that kind of stuff so we definitely love and appreciate you you guys so this is really for you and, uh, and hopefully this will just kick things up a notch clarify things questions will be answered read through this book read through all the notes you're go- not gonna have as many questions as you may have had in the past and I just base that on <laughs> people that's read it and be like oh yeah it's answered a ton of questions that I had when I first read so until next time brothers and sisters I'm Professor Spira peace love and breath